Hello children, I welcome you all to your English class. I hope you all are safe at your homes. For today's English lesson, we will be starting a poem that's included in the second chapter of your Honeysuckle book. The poem is titled The Kite and it's written by an American author, Harry Ben. In this poem, Harry Ben, the poet, had tried to draw a beautiful picture of a flying kite through his words. Most of us might have watched a kite fly, but we never noticed how it does fly, right? So he wants to persuade us through this poem. He wants to uh, make us fly a kite because he thinks that flying a kite fills you with immense joy. It's a pleasure to fly a kite and watch it rise higher and higher in the sky. So you will find this chapter on page number 27 of your book. So let's get started with the reading of the lines, okay? All of us like to fly kites. Have you ever tried to fly one? So, uh, all of us have obviously watched kites fly in the sky, right? Various colors, various designs, various shapes. So, we, most of us have seen kites flying. So, have you ever tried yourself? Have you ever tried flying one kite? Read this poem about a kite as it flies, the, flies in the sky. How bright on the blue is a kite when it's new? So, how, why is it bright and why is it blue? What is this blue? Yes, blue is a color, but here the poet is using blue for the sky, for the clear sky which is without clouds. Okay, so he thinks because uh, the sky is a perfect canvas for a new kite. When a kite is new, when your clothes are new, they shine, they have a different color, they shine very brightly, they are very vibrant looking. So here also, when the kite is flying in the clear sky, when it aims higher in the clear sky, uh, sky free of clouds, it's, it looks very bright, it looks very appealing to the eyes. With the dive and a dip, it snaps its tail. So what do we see here? That the poet is using some words to describe the movement of the kite when it's flying in the sky. Now it has to move upwards, it has to rise in the sky. So what's it's doing? It's taking a dive first. What is a dive? You may have heard this word in swimming. When you dive into a water, when you dive into the pool of the water, your head goes first and then the rest of the body follows. So there also we can see that the kite is diving. Okay, it's diving like this and also dipping. Dipping is a word in which you lower yourself you decrease your height, you decrease your level and then you rise again. So what is the motion of the kite? The kite is using the wind, the kite is using the air to dip and dive. Okay, And it is rising in the sky with, with all the force and softness. And when it does so, the tail, you can see here, this portion is called the tail of the kite. So that tail when it's swinging here and there in the air it's making a cracking sound okay because the force of the wind is strong sometimes and it softens at certain time so this is making a cracking sound this cracking sound here is uh, given by what snaps then so is like a ship with only a cell the movement of the the movement of the kite is compared to the sailing of a ship. I think you have seen a ship sail, right? When it sails, what does it do? It rides on the ocean waves. It, uh, it will use the sail. The, uh, the sail is a cloth that is tied to the ship. And when wind hits the sail, 
it takes it forward so when the waves are rising and falling the tides are occurring the ships can move very easily so here the kite is compared to the kite's movement is compared to the sailing of the ship okay as over tides of wind it rise uh, like the ship uh, moves on the tides of the ocean similarly the kite is moving on the tides of the wind uh, it is riding the kite is riding on the back of the wind and it's rising higher and higher it's soaring in the sky here soaring means it's rising higher up okay it's flying high in the air climbs to the crest of a gust and pulls what do we see that the kite now is climbing to the crest crest is the highest point okay after a point of time it has reached a highest peak uh, crest is usually i can explain you with a diagram you can look here okay you have seen our sea wave right so the highest part of it this highest portion is called the crest okay and the lowest portion is called the trough crest is used usually the peak of a mountain or the highest point of a mountain okay so here we see that uh, the kite is climbing to the crest of a gust gust is a rush of air okay rush of air and pulls now what happens it's tightening the ropes are tightening because it has reached the highest point and now it pulls then seems to rest as wind falls now because the force of the wind was strong uh, it was rising higher in the sky but when the wind when the air has decreased its, its speed what happens it looks as if the kite has stopped there and is waiting is resting okay because it is tired of his, its journey it has it has risen Uh, to such a height it's tired of its journey the wind has uh, lowered its its speed so what do we see here that it it looks as if the kite is resting on the highest point to the crest he has climbed the crest and he is resting there for a while when string goes slack you wind it back now what happens who is you here you is the flyer the flyer uh, because the wind uh, wind has fallen because the wind speed has decreased so the kite is trying to come down now it won't rise any more it won't go higher it will just slow down and it will again come uh, mean start coming down so the string will become slack slack is what will loosen because when the force of the wind was strong it was rising and the strings were tight but now it has grown grown loose because the uh, the kite is now coming down because of the uh, because of the wind wind speed has fallen down okay and uh, you wind it back who is the you you is the flyer i already told you this now uh, he is actually tightening the rope means he is bringing the uh, strings back to his spindle and run until a new breeze blows so what do we see that the flyer is trying to again again uh, again fly his kite so here we can see that he is running so that a new breeze can take the kites higher again so this is an attempt of the flyer to uh, to send his kites back into the sky and it swings fell and up it goes now because he is trying he ran Uh, to make his kite fly he took the string and he ran 
ran as fast as he could because he's trying to make a bridge suitable for his kite to fly high so when he does this the uh, the wings here we know birds have wings kite don't have wings right but wings means what that enables you to fly so here also the poet has used the word wings wings are filled with air and then it again goes up the kite again starts rising into the air how bright on the blue is a kite when it's new what is the poet doing here yes the poet is repeating the lines that he used in the very beginning of the poem why do you think he's doing this because he is watching the kite soar again in the sky okay in the cloudless sky the kite has again started flying so this sight is bringing him so much joy that he wants to state a fact again he wants to say those things again that the new kite which is flying in the sky looks so wonderful looks so pleasant to the eyes but a raggeder thing you never will see okay what is he saying here that raggeder means worn out or torn out you might have noticed you you love watching a kite fly when it's new you love those pleasant colors those vibrant colors you love to see them but have you noticed a raggeder kite a kite which is worn out and torn out how is it worn out and torn out have you noticed it when it flaps on a string in the top of a tree what is he saying you might have no, not noticed that this kite which was flying high which was a sight to watch which everyone enjoyed now when it's in pathetic condition when it has torn out when it has worn out no one loves to watch it okay no one even notices when it flaps flaps means what it moves side to side or up and down because of the force of the wind and it's in torn condition it it has got tear in it with repetitive uses with continuous using that kite has become torn out it has become old and ugly no one loves to watch uh, these kites okay the condition the plight of the kite when it was new okay that is completely different from the kite which has become uh, torn out or worn out okay it has turned old now so no one loves to notice these kites so what he wants to do here what does the poet want to say here he wants us to be a part of a kite's journey because when you start flying a kite yourself you will understand that uh, watching uh, watching it the kite fly and flying the kite yourself is a, it are two different things okay you might love watching the kite fly but when you do it yourself you will experience a joy that you might have not ever felt so he wants us to just uh, take a kite just get a kite for ourselves and then let it rise higher in the sky so this was the end of the chapter and i think it's a beautiful poem written by harry ben okay now we will be writing down the meanings so please get ready with your notebooks some words you might need to uh, remember so let's get started by writing those words okay so the first word is dive dive means to plunge into water head first okay 
plunge into water head first. Second word is dip. It means drop or go down. To a lower level. Okay. Dip is drop or go down to a lower level. Third word is snaps. sound. Okay. Wait a minute. Just add one more thing. To make a cracking sound. To make a cracking sound. Now fourth, snaps to make a cracking sound. Okay. Fourth word is source. Fly or rise. Fly or rise. In the air. Source means fly or rise in the air. Okay. Fifth word is tide. Tide is the alternate rising and falling of the sea waves. The alternate rising and falling. Of a sea wave. Okay. Next is number six. Tide is the alternate rising and falling of a sea wave. Number six is gust. Gust is rush. Rush of air. Okay. Number seven. Six is gust. Gust is rush of air. Next is lack. S L A C K. It means lose. Slack means lose. The ninth, the eighth word is ragged. Ragged up, which means worn out or torn out. Worn out or torn out. Okay. Now we will move to nine. Nine is flaps. Flaps means an act of act of moving a wing or an arm moving a wing or arm up and down up and down or from side to side from side to side. Okay. So here are these words. You can take a screenshot to write it down later.
okay so there is one more word that we will be writing and the word is crest okay crest is the top of a mountain of a mountain or the highest point point of a sea wave of a sea wave okay so this was the last word in the meaning section okay so i hope uh, you have understood the lesson you have understood the poem okay if you have any doubts we will be resolving that in your online classes okay now let's move to a part where you will be learning something really new what is that new thing i'm talking about that new thing is called literary devices you might have heard some of them before also but today we will be reading in details about those literary devices what is a literary device a literary device is used by poets to compose or to make poems that are pleasant to hear okay that enhances the beauty of the poem because in words we cannot feel it right we cannot see it so we have to listen to the music of the poem so here also we will see that harry ben has used mainly two important literary devices that we should know about okay the first one is a simile what is a simile a simile is a comparison of two unlike objects okay those objects which are compared because they have a common feature which is which is same right so they are two unlike objects they are very different from each other but because they have a common characteristic that's why we can compare so it's a direct comparison there is no hidden comparison you can see that it is a simile because some connecting words are used there so we will be writing the definition first and then i'll be giving you examples from the poem that makes it very clear what is a simile okay let's write down first the definition simile simile is a literary device device that directly compares directly compares two unlike objects two unlike objects objects with the help of with the help of connecting words like connecting words such as like or as okay so what have i written simile is a literary device that directly compares two unlike objects with the help of connecting words such as like and as now can you give me an example from the text 
let me give you an example from outside first so we can say that she is like a rose now the girl and the rose are two different objects right they are two different objects a girl is a human being the rose is a plant so is a shrub so they are two different things but what we are comparing what we are comparing we are comparing their beauty okay we are comparing the sight of it that they are very beautiful the girl is as beautiful as a rose so here we see also in the text you can find one in the very first line i think you will see uh sorry not in the first line but in the th in the third uh, couplets in the fifth line you will see then soars like a ship with only a sail okay here the kite's movement is compared with the ship's movement okay so here we see that soars like a ship okay in the text you can see that there is a word soars like a ship ship here the word like is used to compare the movement of the kite with the movement of the ship so uh, you will find such comparisons are called simile okay i hope it's clear now we will move to the second uh, literary device which has been used frequently here okay the second is alliteration let's write down that one first then i'll be giving you examples second one is alliteration 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 now what is it let's write it down alliteration is a literary device literary device where a series of words words with similar consonant sounds with similar consonant sounds sounds occur repeatedly okay so alliteration is a literary device where a series of words with similar consonant sounds occur repeatedly what do i mean by this i hope you all have heard the poems twinkle twinkle little star ba ba black ship now the consonant sounds listen to the consonant sounds i hope you know what is a vowel and a consonant by now so a consonant sound is repeat, is repeatedly occurring when alliteration is used now ba ba black ship that ba sound is getting repeated it's used frequently okay again twinkle twinkle little star to to twinkle twinkle right also now don donald duck is uh, dancing on the deck now you can uh, understand i think the same sound which appears in the beginning of these words and when they occur frequently repeatedly one after the other these literary this literary device is called alliteration okay i hope it's clear now we will find some uh, some alliterations example from the text itself from your poem now you can see uh, there's in the very first line you have bright on the blue do you see that the first example is bright on the blue you have other words here 
but bright on the blue. Here you can see that this B sound is repeating itself. Okay. So, this is an example of alliteration. Again, you have uh, climbs to the crest. Okay. Climbs to the crest. So, you can see here C and C is getting repeated. So, C is a consonant. So, uh, it's an example of alliteration only. Now, again we can see bris blows and run until a new bris blows. So, bris blows is also an example of alliteration. Bris blows. Okay. Now, okay. So, these examples will do to help you understand what is an alliteration. So, children, thank you for watching the video. Do join me in the next class where we will be solving the exercises that are there at the end of your chapter. Bye-bye.